French because that will make it easy. Okay. Once again, uh, uh, let me copy and paste it in the uh, chat if it's not done. Uh, Anupunagaru, can you hear us? And uh, you can uh, take the link, which is on chat now. And then uh, that opens up the translation uh, link from Wordly. Then uh, choose the top of French instead of English, if you see the English, then uh, you can choose uh, French. And then the, the speech is going to be translated, uh, transcribed in uh, French. Then uh, we'll test it. Dr. Rao, but over to you. I'm good and, on uh, the Spanish side. Um, I can and please, I want everybody, everybody please mute uh, all the admins. Please mute everyone except the speaker, Dr. Rao. Only microphone should be on. Everybody should be muted. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Please let me share my screen. Can I share my screen? Yes, yes, please, go ahead. Otherwise, let me know, I have it ready. Yes, ready. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Hello? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, we can. And, uh, oh, yeah. Thanks for all your patience. And what we are trying to do now here is not just give information, information with, that you can use on the day when we give the information. And therefore, we thought that this information need not be just restricted only to those English speaking who can understand English. This month, YouTube touched a trillion visitors. What it means is anything that we want to say, unless it reaches a few million, it has no value. It will be suppressed in the large noise. So even if this is very important information, it cannot be understood by the population. Therefore, we are trying to take a big step, as someone already mentioned, to go and translate whatever India Home is doing to the benefit of several millions, if not billions. With the languages put together here, more than 2 billion people can understand if they have interest. Now, coming to the today's topic, we are giving these lectures to you every Monday. These are science-based facts, which means whatever we say, whatever we present to you, they're all having enough credible scientific research backing it. That is our main purpose. Otherwise, it will not have any value in terms of present and future information. Today's topic is what to eat. But this slide is not a wrong one. It is put purposefully to remind you all that previous presentation of mine, we discussed about when to eat. We have concluded in almost 40 minutes of discussion with various scientific points and practical observations that if you can restrict your food intake in a day, between eight to 12 hours, you will be healthy. And you will be healthier than what you are before. This is the simplest thing that anyone can take and implement without really making big changes in your life. Even though it is a simple one, it is possibly requires good effort. For making this presentation, I have adapted myself to restrict my food intake, which was 15 hours before to close to 12 hours now. Therefore, I'm sure all of you can do it. 
Now, today's topic is what to eat? There's so much food anywhere, wherever you go. The first question comes whether to eat vegetarian or non-vegetarian food. Non-vegetarian food, people understand it's highly packed with nutrients, highly energetic, yes. But we have to understand our own body system, the human system. Is it meant for vegetarian or non-vegetarian? It is a highly debated point. Therefore, with one single scientific, logical, measurable information, I want you to decide for yourself. As you could see here, our food, whether you eat non-vegetarian, vegetarian, whatever, has to go through your gut. It has to digest. Millions of years of our evolution has given us a gut and that doesn't change that much in our lifetime or in the thousands of years, either before or in the near future. All carnivores, those that eat meat, have a gut length of three to six times. All herbivores, those animals which eat only vegetables or vegetarian material have 10 to 12 plus, depending on the animals, all of them are not here, 10 to 12 plus to their body size in meters. And humans have approximately 10, maybe to 11 times their body height. Therefore, it is very clear, we are not exactly like animals that eat only meat. We are not exactly like herbivores, animals which eat only vegetables. So you choose to the extent that you can and considering the gut length, we are more towards vegetarians than non-vegetarians. There is another proof that is right in your mouth to decide who we are. Carnivores or herbivores. As you can see, carnivores have to have sharp teeth. Otherwise, they can't eat meat. Meaning, hunt and eat. Not like the one which we take it from the fridge. Omnivores, both. They have the flexibility of such kind of teeth that can share the meat and also have the vegetables eaten well. Then herbivores exclusively have flat teeth to eat vegetables. There is a category of animals, frugivores. They eat fruits, vegetables, and nuts. And coming to humans, as you can see, we have a very flexible, reasonably towards frugivores, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and herbs, and meat that is processed. So with this information, one can decide to what extent they can eat vegetarian, non-vegetarian food. There's another important question that all over the world people have. If you are a vegetarian, would you have strength? Would you have muscle? This question was posed to me many, many places in the world, wherever I went. They were all surprised that a person like me is walking, talking. And some people even act, actually asked me in South Africa, do you really have children? Assuming that a non-vegetarian can only have children and vegetarians cannot have children. I can understand the Bolivian or some illiterate people, but my own professor in Paris, Dr. Dominic Labi was shocked 
that I'm not a vegetarian, that I'm not a non-vegetarian. Non and she said that if you have to live in the Northern countries, she's a very well-respected scientist in the world. She knows India and other countries very well. Yet she asked me, if you want to work in my lab in Paris, you have to eat beef. Otherwise, don't come to my lab. Those kind of notions are there in the highly educated people and lay people. Obviously, I did not eat beef. I did not go to lab, but still I finished my PhD. Though never anybody asked my PhD degree, if you want to see for a proof, I can send it to Kavita and India Home team and they can show it to you. Coming to the vegetable food items. At least there are 7,000 edible food items. And we have a database of food database 728. Indian food database has 528. Worldwide cultivated vegetables or grains are 200. Widely used food items are 30. Mostly used food items are only four. Rice, wheat, maize, potato. And you know for sure what we individually use the most, only one, rice or wheat. So what is the consequence? This is the consequence. The world entire suddenly woke up in 2017 presentations by various scientists who worked in thousands and thousands of databases from across the world for five years and calculated, gathered, debated, curated, and finally, everything was filtered into one single graph that is shown here, which nobody refuted since 2017. It's, 2017 it is discussed and 2019 it is published. And till now, no one said that this is wrong. This is the most powerful scientific information to tell us that we have to focus on our food if you want to have better health. As you can see here, cause of death, diet is the risk. All this kind of blue thing is about your food and food related problems. So if you remove that, certainly people will not stop dying, but they will live a good healthy life. Then let's see what is food. Most of you know what is food in terms of various names, but scientists have identified in the last 100, 200 years, and in the last 50, 60 years, a high focus is put on this understanding of the food. Food, people understood, contains proteins, fats, minerals, antioxidants, vitamins, and carbohydrates. Why did this kind of a classification came into existence? Because just like the IT boom now, in the early 1900s or late 1800s, there was a chemistry boom. Plenty of bright minds joined chemistry with the hope that they will get good jobs. And obviously like IT industry saturation, chemistry industry saturation, chemistry industry saturation let them go to other areas. And most of them came to food, nutrition, health. And they have a different approach for life and understanding. Every chemist wants to break it down all the molecules into the simplest molecule and study the molecule and understand the molecule and then reconstruct the whole thing from the molecular view. That is called reductionistic approach. Reduce everything to a molecule and understand. Therefore, we got this kind of protein, fat, mineral, antioxidant, vitamin, carbohydrate about our food. Until then, we never had the entire world, not just Indians and Ayurvedic people. We never had the constituents of food as the key guiding factors for our health. In the recent time, the constituents of the food have become 
the guiding factors for our health. Then what's the result? Here is a simple landmark or imp most important experiment. The experiment is Dr. Campbell did this experiment. The experiment is taking a mice that has a gene predisposed for giving cancer, which means if you grow these mice in a normal way, giving good food, it will definitely, definitely get cancer. So what he did when he was shocked that a lot of Indian and other countries like Vietnam, Vietnam, they don't take enough protein. So he wanted to prove that not taking protein is bad for health. So he did this experiment. He took those mice, give them 20% protein and a low 5% protein. The mice are having a gene predisposed for cancer. And in few weeks, he saw every mice that was given, every mouse that was given 20% protein developed cancer. And every mouse that took 5% protein did not develop cancer, even though it is predisposed to get cancer. This experiment was done in late 70s, repeated several times all over the world and established that this is a remarkable health diet link. Even if you are predisposed for certain diseases, depending on what you eat, how you eat, when you eat, make all the difference for your health. Disease is not as simple as what is taught in the medical schools today. It is a highly complex web. If there is a gut dis dysfunction that may cause a disease, but that disease will affect various other activities. Every single slide or every single point that I'm trying to tell you needs at least an hour to discuss if it were to be a, a regular presentation. But in view of our health and food connection, I'm trying to give the main points. And if any one of you want, we can have separate sessions to understand this in detail. So it is the root cause of a disease that actually should be tackled rather than the symptom. You have a heartburn. If you take a pill, it doesn't mean it will go away permanently. But there is something that is happening here at the root level that is should be taken care of. Otherwise, your heartburn will come back again or may result in another psoriasis or autoimmune inflammatory disease. So the most simplest understanding is your body is one single entity. Anything that comes to you as a disease cannot be simply taken away by one single pill because all these systems are interlinked. In the previous presentation, you saw how every single organ, their timing is affecting your health. In the same way, every single aspect of the disease is interlinked. Then what is the proof that every single link is connected? And all these links are the ones which are causing you disease. Recently in 2019, Harvard published a report. Taking all these factors into consideration, the cardiologist at Harvard said very simply to their patients, please take some fruits. A one year long advice like this 
they calculated it has actually reduced 50 billion dollars in healthcare costs of hospitalization surgeries and various things for their patients just one suggestion take extra fruit and therefore this is the proof to say that food is key and you have the ability to control it to have better health so what kind of food are we eating this is mostly south asian group so i have taken this example from the lancet commission lancet commission found that south asians are on, on average are undernourished this is absolutely true if you just look at your own personal family friends relatives circle it is not the money it is not the poverty that is causing the malnutrition and it is the poverty it is the po poverty of the information yeah. poverty of the knowledge that is causing the malnutrition that's the reason why india home is giving you these presentations if with these presentations your poverty of information your poverty of knowledge about food and health will come down and you will have better health south asians take one thing in excess that is starch but they do not take sufficient meat they do not take other things like the eggs fish or dairy or fruits vegetables whole grains nuts all these are available to you they are not expensive they are available and they are affordable please think about this and if you this is the 100% level if you can increase any one of these or all of them to reach or towards this 100% goal you would definitely improve your health there is another misconception that if you take meat you will have more protein and you will be healthy and you will have strength i tried to negate that showed you two different examples but there was a large scale experiment that was done to show even if you eat more protein meat you will not get all the protein into the body see the example this is a study with 71751 subjects to see what they eat and how much they get into their body it's called the adventist health study done in us these are all the adventist christian groups who follow very strict rules about their food according to the bible 71000 were selected and they when they looked at in the total protein the white bars are the strict vegetarians even among the christians the good number of them are very strict vegetarians their level of protein intake is almost the same as the non vegetarians in all the different categories except in the animal protein obviously their animal protein is higher for non vegetarians and the animal protein is negligible or none for the strict vegetarians therefore it is not imperative to have only meat is there a benefit the same study seventh day adventist 2 study found that non vegetarians have 7.6 percent higher diabetes than vegetarians there are so many rules that united states government started understanding these things and they are trying to bring laws from 2016 onwards a big movement is going on with hancock trying to hancock insurance agency trying to give 600 dollars per year to premiums to a new medical bill tailored to home delivered meals which you are already getting 
and this will be a new way. What India Home has done, the home delivered meals due to COVID maybe is going to be a new way of improving the country's health. And if India Home does this very systematically, it will be one of the pioneers. What, what do the doctors say? Dr. Mark Hyman, who is standing here, is one of the most celebrated doctors from Boston to Cleveland Clinic. He travels all over the country and talks. Not only him, I can actually bring 100 doctors list and present to you who talk about this. These are all highly successful, very rich doctors actually speaking. What he says is, food isn't like medicine. It is medicine. And it is our number one tool for creating a vibrant health that we deserve. So our food is the root cause of disease because we are eating and eating and getting sick and sicker and eventually that became a cause of death apparently. But if we dig deep and understand what is the problem, because our ancestors have lived with food and how suddenly it could become a root cause of death. This is the one. Food is not the root cause of death, but processed food is the root cause of death. Processed food, anything that is processed. If you take wheat, make roti, that's fine. But if you make a refined flour, maida, that's bad. If you eat sugarcane, raw, or little processed into jaggery, it's not that bad. But if you make sugar, that is bad. We can go on this. But anything that is processed, which means anything that is taken from farm to factory, with one or two steps, it's okay. But anything beyond one or two steps is processed and that is not going to give you good health. In the past one and a half years, we have been collecting a lot of food items. Keshav, Nikhil, and few others here on this call today, and several more along with me, roughly about 20 people have been working with me, collected more than 10,000 plants. Keshav's database holds more than 10,000. But we realized 10,000 cannot be understood even by us sitting all the day, all day and all year. So we have reduced that to 200 and printed charts because someone wanted 2,000 charts, so we printed and gave them. We have details of these 200 to a great extent for each one of their nutritive values. And we have made into placemats, 25 on each, fruits, vegetables, so that when you see, you feel like eating. There are seven more, but I'm showing only one as an example. Another very important area, another team of my students have worked with me for several months and collected 40 different pulses. I'm sure you ate pulses, dolls, but maybe 10. If someone had eaten all, ate all the 40, I'll be very happy to sit and talk to you. And there is another misconception that plant protein doesn't contain all the amino acids, essential amino acids. Therefore, you have to eat meat. No, if you like meat, there's nothing wrong in eating meat in moderation. But plant proteins, do have all the amino acids. They have all the amino acids, yet there's only one amino acid that is missing or less. Everybody says this is missing, but when we actually saw the data, Keshav in the last three, four days has pulled all the information about all the materials that we have and we made this chart for you. I don't think it was published anywhere so far and we can publish this. Only methanine is less. Common sense is increase methanine. Then everything will be fine. Methanine can be found in till, gingerly or sesame seeds. 
So I don't think there is any Indian who would not eat it. And it was widely given to us as children. So please take this point into serious consideration that all plant proteins do have the amino acids, maybe a le little less, but eat more. So plants have all the proteins needed. These are the three guiding books to tell that whatever I said so far withstood or which will stand and in future will be proven right with the knowledge that we need to adapt for better health. One is Charaka Samhita, 2,300 years old. It is not just 2,300 years old. The, the Talapatra book was made 2,300 years old, but thousands of years of knowledge was put in there. So is the case with the Chinese traditional medicine. In the recent times, unexpectedly, without knowing about these things, Dan Butner from Minneapolis went around the world, collected food items. If you read what he said, the Blue John Kitchen, the traditional foods, and the traditional foods come from this kind of old text knowledge. But the modern science doesn't want that. Modern science wants to prove at everything at molecular level. So if proving at molecular level is the right scientific approach and the old traditional texts have a different one, is there a conflict? No, there is no conflict. In this slide, I really want to show you very clearly. Eating fat, eating meat will definitely cause atherosclerosis and heart diseases. There's no doubt. It's proven beyond doubt. Modern scientists are not wrong. But if you add garlic, garlic is eaten very well in the Northern Europeans. And wine in France and other countries. And olive oil, the Mediterraneans. Because they have, for centuries, they have non-vegetarian meal. And this produces the ancillin and DMB molecules, which actually will block the formation of atherosclerosis. Of course, it doesn't happen overnight. For every molecule, for every food item, we have to do that kind of research. It will happen. Culture, history takes time. Medicine, nutrition will follow it. When we have education, and eventually the food environment in the stores must change then your health definitely will change. For now, we have this simple suggestion. The benefit on the top and the harm foods on the bottom. Fruits, nuts, fish, vegetables, plant oils, whole grains, beans, yogurt, eat in large quantities. Cheese, poultry, milk, limited. Eggs, limited. Unprocessed red meats, limited. But refined grains, starches, sugars, processed meats, high sodium foods, Industrial transplants cut down as much as you can because they can harm. So increase your vegetables, fruits, as much as you can. At least from today, please add one more food, one more fruit, one more item which was given in the 200 chart that I showed or we'll give you more to choose. Then what's the benefit of all this, doing all these things? Will my diabetes go away? No. Will your cardiac problem go away at the 60s, 70s? No, not immediately. It will take a little bit of time. But what is my immediate benefit? You will not get tired. This definitely I can tell you. And many, many people have been experiencing it. It is something that you have to do and experience. If you are tired, eat this kind of better food, you will not. Then why this whole science and trouble came? In 1961, Time Magazine published Ansel Key's work saying that fat is bad, low fat diet is good. Because he studied in various countries and published a seven country report said that in these seven countries, they eat low fat and they are healthy. 
Then after his death, all his papers were out. And then they found that he studied 22 countries and he picked up only seven countries, but all the other 22 countries, they were eating high fat. He didn't publish that. So Time Magazine corrected it. I mean, this is a historical blunder of scientists. And therefore Time Magazine again published in 2014, Eat Butter. And then again, the fat thing going on still. Unfortunately, even today we have low fat milk on the shelves. Soon they'll say, don't eat butter, eat avocado. I hope it will happen soon. So we have so many food items. So which one you have to choose and where is the list? Keshav Agrawal has posted this list at this site. You can download 540 food items list. And all of us are sure many people have been working on this, not just me alone. As I said, more than 20 people have worked on this and you can download for free and choose what you want. We'll be very happy to know what you choose. If you can inform us, we have no doubt more than 365 food items you would choose and be healthy. There's an age old statement. Non aushadi bhutam kinchit drabjam upalabdata. This was in Sanskrit. There is not a single item that does not contain medicinal value, a loose translation, or in a positive sense, every food item has some medicinal value. Please try to use, eat, and for your body, whatever is good, continue and be healthy. But these things will come. Through doctor, to doctors, not from Bhava Prakash book by Bhava Mishra hundreds of years back, but it will come in the next few decades to you if enough money, if enough science is developed. You may ask why it's not happening because of this reason. I don't know whether you all heard it or not. Last week, an extraordinary human event happened. Humans have actually sent this man-made thing to sun. Going to moon is not a big deal compared to this because it was launched in 2018. It traveled 83.6 million miles. Four days back, it touched the outer space of sun. It is like Hanuman. If you remember the old story, and the cost of this particular experiment was $1.5 billion. As a scientist, I can tell if someone spends $1.5 billion on this kind of research, in next five to 10 years, you will have every food item worked out in the manner that I've been talking in the last 34 minutes. And you will have a list, your doctors will have a list and your medicines will come down. But today you have the list Please experiment with your body and the food and improve your health as much as we And we are here eagerly waiting for your response on those kind of experiments. Namaste. Thank you, Dr. Rao. Yes. So we are going to open for the questions, answers, or what's the next agenda? Yes, we can uh, have the q and I'm going to stop recording now. <laughs>